pues verá. JB, what, what's the name of the podcast? Nigga, is you deaf? It's a pod named Kickback. A pod named Kickback. It's like a tribe called Quest. You, you say, say the, the whole, whole thing. thing. Welcome to a pod named Kickback, also known as the Black CNN. And a revolution will we'll be, be televised. televised. I'm no breaks new, the righteous ratchet. I'm no breaks new, the righteous ratchet. If you throw it, I'll catch it. If you got it, I'll match it. Every Monday, we right back at it. I am the Black Savage. What up, y'all? It's JB Frank. I'm that gangster geek representing NWA. Again, representing NWA. Coming at you every Nerds with attitude. Yeah, oh yeah. Nerds yeah. with attitude. Nerds, nerds and there's a reason we're telling you this, but yeah. you'll tell you about it later. Yeah. But go ahead, JB. Yeah. Uh representing nerds with attitude coming at you every goddamn Schmonday. Happy Schmonday, everybody. Welcome to the show. Welcome back to the kickback. It's an exciting show, an exciting episode, and a lot going on to discuss new. Yeah, I, I feel in my, in my mental mind, y'all sitting right here. In my mental mind. So, how are you doing today? You good? <laughs> hey, well, have you been well, watching do- the, the media? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Thank you for asking. That was very yeah. polite of you. Well, I like that outfit. It's I like that outfit. RJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, uh, Randy is. Yeah. So, um, JB, we're going to go right into high and low. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want to go first? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so, because New will probably want to talk about this high, I'm going to pick another high. I actually went on a date this week, New. Okay. Had a lot of fun. Okay. Got to, got to see a lovely lady um, and sit down and have dinner at a restaurant. Um, now, to be clear... I had a word with the owner online before we went to the establishment. He showed me their printed um, social distancing and sanitation guidelines um, so that we could feel safe going into the restaurant. Um, We also got seating outside. We were the only guests sitting outside. And so, um, yeah, so we were able to sit there and chill and drink and talk and have a great time for a solid, like, three and a half hours just chilling. It was awesome. Yeah, I, I know everybody's acting like the world has opened up and in some situations it hasn't, but it sounds like you put a lot of effort and a lot of work and research into your date. It just wasn't out there all willy-nilly. Right, J.B.? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, as you know, I am commu- uh, immunocompromised, and you know, I feel like any safety and respect I'm going to be um, giving myself, I need to also, you know, uh, also provide that for whomever I'm out with, my lady especially. So we felt very, very safe, very secure. Um, um, eating at the restaurant, everything was on the up and up. There was okay. short, it was short staff, so they were, you know, it was like limited occupancy type of shit Mm. um so it was very good we had a wonderful meal um and we'll be seeing each other again soon so um, there you go so y'all know that the kickback is this date new and jb out here we in the streets (laughs) we in the streets oh wait wait, wait. we're not dating each other pause (laughs) we're 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 we're, we're, we're figuring things out in the streets (laughs) yeah uh we are officially back on the market um and so that that was a lot of fun get get at me My, my stomach flat my low of the week um my low of the week we're going to touch on later a little more but it's getting scary out here it's getting scary people not paying attention and honestly i'm doing so much to try and move things in a positive direction that's my only negative is that i'm impeded by other people's ignorance right now new okay you're being specific to COVID. Being specific to COVID, yes. Like, people are not being safe and not being careful. So I have to do extra work. to Because of them. Exactly. And I I can't go certain places, you know what I'm saying, do certain things. Because 
of their lack of responsibility. Exactly. I, I hear you. I hear you. Um, my high of the week was our um our new online merchandise store, which you knew I was gonna say. Um, I have been trying to put together a clothing line for a while. I have been trying to. Well, we have been trying to get uh, clothing merchant more merchandise for you guys. Y'all always ask about the mugs and the shirts, and we're trying to do that. And over the last week or so, we have started the process, and we are. We'll be ready to open on August first. We're ready. Some of you have seen the work already. You know where we at. I was going. Um, I was going to pop a little bit up on the screen. Yeah, go ahead and pop a little bit up on the screen. Yeah, let yeah, them yeah, know. Let them let, let it show. Yeah, um, totally T-shirts, that. mugs. It's going to be purses, thongs, condoms, uh, backpacks, hoodies. We're going to give you a little bit of everything. It, well, as you can see right there, you know, you got a partner in kickback mugs, T-shirts, uh, nerds with attitude T-shirts, righteous and ratchet T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts. Um, I like this this function. We can actually show them this shit. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to launch. Go to the next page. Give me this one. There you go. Yeah, we're going to launch on August 1st. I think from what you guys are seeing now, ladies, we got shirts for the ladies. So don't, don't be that way. We got you. Be thinking about your queens um, and the mugs, of course. So we're looking to launch on August 1st, and you guys are getting a sneak preview of this. We don't normally do a lot of promotion and shit. But um, we wanted to let you guys know what we have coming because we appreciate y'all being kickbackers. Kickback! Yeah. Especially the ones that are on Patreon, whether you're there for $2 a month, subscribe for extra footage, discounts, uh, bonus shows, $4, same thing, a little bit more, or the $7 tier a month, which is a little bit more. The kicker tier, the backer tier, and the kickbacker tier. So we appreciate all the support from you guys. And without further ado, I think we're going to go ahead and get this show shot So as I said, uh, that was my high, having that, bringing that to you. My low, um, I found myself in the midst of some Facebook drama this week, JB. Okay. What happened? Um, a homie we know made a post about polyamory uh, with a picture of a guy and two women and saying that's, that's what he wanted. I um chimed in, like, hey, Polly, do what you got to do, have fun, enjoy. And a bunch of women came on there attacking us, saying that, uh, you know, fuck you and your Polly shit. You probably ain't got enough money to pay for two, three women. And, you know, you got enough dick and tongue for all these women and all this shit. And we was just sitting there like, whoa, why are y'all so angry, ladies? Relax. <laughs> like, God damn. And then um, it came out that they were just, um, they're having a hard time dating, finding men. And they feel like the new poly angle is making it so that they have to be bisexual in order to get a man. And so they're looking at people that are poly as in like they're ruining the dating pool and it's already hard enough. And I'm just like, um, I don't know why you're having a hard time. Poly women be having three, four boyfriends. You can't get one. Like, like, what's like? That's your thing. You can't be mad at polyamorous people. But the, the whole point of it was um, that I got. I, I was upset. I was angered. What the fuck, y'all bitches tripping? But um, that was my low of the week. Um, what else we got? Our kickback fact. Yeah. And, and feel free to chime in on that, y'all, because that, that that was some crazy shit. Um, our kickback fact is actually something on Facebook, um, which we learned. Uh, people break up most on Mondays. Yeah. So if you're watching this live, you're probably going to get dumped tomorrow. <laughs> and if you're listening to this on one of the podcast sites, you're oh probably about God. to get dumped in another 20 minutes. This guy. Sorry. This guy. But if you listen to the whole podcast and you won't get dumped at that point, you'll have at least an hour and a half of not being dumped. Okay. But I, I, I'm going to read the fact to him, Jake. I was about to say, like, so, come on, man. <laughs> searching through public Facebook data, Lee Byron and David McCandless found their relationship status has changed for the worst two weeks before Christmas, around Easter, and on Mondays. So this data may be somewhat misleading as people might not be live updating their breakups. It does show an obvious trend. JB, have you ever been dumped on a Monday? 
Um, <laughs> I honestly don't remember what day it was most of the time. Um, it's only happened a couple of times, but um, I don't remember whether it was Monday or not. It was, it was kind of like it happened, whatever. Um, now, the other thing that happened is the Facebook update always happened much, much later than the actual real breakup happened. Mm. So that, that's I, a good I'm point. not I'm not I'm not really the fact that it's based on Facebook status data. Um, that bothers me a little bit because I've you know, I have failed to change a Facebook status for weeks sometimes. Yeah, well, uh, uh, relationship status. Um, I think people go to that quickly. The the people that like are active, mm-hmm. um, and like even on like Instagram, like people unfollow each other or Twitter. You know, oh shit, they unfollowed each other. Yeah. Whenever a celebrity beefing, you know that unfollow coming quick as shit, and that's like the nail in a the coffin. They unfollowed them. You know, this beef is real now. Um, but change of relationship status. I, it probably isn't accurate to the day people break up now that I think about it, but it's probably accurate to people wanting to start their week off. Yeah. They done broke up on Thursday and let the weekend go, and now they're going to start it off right. Yeah. yeah have any of you sense. have you guys been dumped on a Monday? Let's talk about this. Uh, on a Monday, my shit happens for some reason on a Wednesday. You get dumped on Woman Crush Wednesday, that's bad because you're a woman. They done found a new Woman Crush, and it dumped you right after that. It was probably Ashanti. I'm just saying. You never know. This nigga. You never know. This nigga. You never know. Um, so that's our face that's our kickback fact of the week. What else we got, JB? Uh let's see here. Kickback fact. Moving on down to our viral story of the week. My left stroke just went viral. Um, our viral stories of the week. We're gonna start with JB's old um Crack buddy DMX. No, let me not do that. We, can, we celebrate DMX. Like, like, we celebrate like, DMX boy, today. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll say uh, JB's uh, old poker buddy DMX and my old um, weed buddy Snoop. That's why they backwards. It's but, probably yeah, yeah, it's definitely yeah, backwards. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, anyway. So there was a versus battle with Snoop and DMX, and it was great. It was uh, catalogs you love. And the thing that made me feel the best about it was DMX showed up as a fat old man, which means he's not using drugs. Which he said he's drinking Kool Aid, and um, it made me feel really good inside to see X healthy, looking healthy, and then the love they showed each other. It was probably one of the best versus battles. Uh, for the musical content, the camaraderie, the showmanship. They were in the same room, and to see X healthy, I think, took the cake, JB. That that took it to the next level for me. Yeah, I mean, they, they basically put on a little mini a little mini concert with both of their uh, both of their selections and the thing that I loved is how much each one of them loved each other's music they were both acting as hype men for each other's songs and shit Hell yeah. they knew all the lyrics and shit up there partying together dancing together like just two just two old ass you know uh tigers like just thinking about thinking <laughs> dogs, about two old ass dogs yeah the old ass dogs that's right um <laughs> thinking about thinking about you know times back then you know what i'm saying and um one of the things that snoop said is that this is what all of these battles were supposed to be like yeah. you know what i'm saying celebrations a, yeah celebration of music and camaraderie you know um and so we got to see that and we got to see x come back like that looking healthy strong um yeah, you man. know happy honestly happy so that was dope Definitely was, man. One of my favorite versus battles, damn near fucking ever. But another versus, as we named, I mean, as we've titled this episode, versus, versus <laughs> yeah. um, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr., both in their 50s, 154, 151, um, now ironically about the same size, um, are going to fight for charity um, in uh Mike Tyson's new league, he says he's putting together. And this is going to happen on September 12th. So this isn't eight years from now. This ain't next year. This is uh, a month and a half. Um, 
I am not the biggest fan of Mike Tyson fighting Roy Jones because I think Mike Tyson is going to eat Roy Jones' lunch. But I wouldn't mind some boxing. I wouldn't mind seeing Mike in the ring. I wouldn't mind seeing Roy in the ring. I don't want to see him together, but I'm going to watch. Yeah, new. I'm de- I'm definitely going to watch. You, you know, we you know how we do. We got into the fight analytics and yeah. everything when we were when we first were talking about this topic off the air and um you know, one of the things that would have helped Roy survive against Mike was his quickness, particularly his footwork, the way he mm-hmm. the way he encircled his opponents. You know, he would go through a fight without getting hit sometimes. You know, he was one of them type of niggas. He ain't that no more. He nah. he jive dumpy now. His <laughs> his hands are still quick as fuck, but he don't move like Mike moved in close. And don't he, look like it. Yeah, and he he a look he's a little dude. So if you a big little dude, you fighting in close, and that's 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 Mike's church right there. <laughs> I don't. Based on what I saw, I don't see this fight going long. Honestly, I'm gonna keep mm. it a buck with you. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I boy, we gonna hopefully you get it together. Boy, boy's getting bigger. I don't know what that means. Pause, <laughs> yeah. but it's gotten bigger. Pause. <laughs> um, uh, Kanye versus everybody. Everybody. <laughs> this mama went on Twitter, started talking about killing oh, fucking Meek Lord. at a meeting, and he trying to get a divorce. Oh, and I am I, I pissed Twitter and Facebook off this week. I don't think Kanye's a genius. I never thought Kanye was a genius. Me. I thought he was a Bama that made good beats. And then I thought it was a Bama that made good songs. And then I thought it was a Bama that got other people to make his beats and songs. Never thought he was a genius. Um, I appreciated him saying George Bush doesn't care about black people. But even that isn't exactly accurate. Like right. Kanye has been off. This whole Harriet Tubman uh, didn't really free the slave. She you know, got on the work for other people. Slave and slave, a slave and a worker are two different, a slave and employee of one, they're two different things. That's one. So if Harriet Tubman got people out of bondage and then got them jobs with other white people in in the, what, what was that, JB, 1800s? Mm-hmm. Where were they going to work for the other black people that had companies? Of course they're going to work for white people in that day and age. The difference is they're getting paid now. And I get tired of people throwing up the mental health thing with Kanye. Like, like, I'm crazy my fucking self. JB crazy his fucking self. But we we, we do things so it doesn't come out as much. <laughs> one of those <laughs> things. One of those things is just not coming out your face all crazy like that. Um, you know, this is unfortunate on a variety of levels. You're going to announce a presidential campaign and then you're going to go down this ridiculously stupid spiral in public, basically. Um, People are coming out and saying, "Okay, he's, you know, he's off his meds. He needs mental help, this, that and the third. But I mean, the biggest thing that he needs to do is just shut the fuck up and shut it down, in my opinion. Yeah. And Kim Kardashian released a statement saying we can't control him and he keeps doing this shit. And y'all know he's bipolar. And I get that, and I feel for that. But at the same time, it's like, when I got on Fantasia, because she was like 25 and couldn't read, and niggas didn't understand my lack of sympathy, I was like, okay, if you can't read when you're 10, whatever. If you can't read when you're 15, that's serious shit, because you're a little older now. If you can't read at 20, you're negligent. If you can't read at 25, you just made a decision to not read. And I'm just not fucking with you because that, that's a level of ignorance that I can't understand. And people with mental health issues, people with issues, I suffer from rage. JB will tell you, I, I, I get, if my, my switch is flipped, I can't even, it's almost, a, it, it is very difficult to calm back down, even if it wasn't flipped intentionally. Even if it was like, whoa, you, you didn't even hear what I said. I actually said this, or I actually did this, or that white woman over there said that, or you know, whatever the fuck. Once my switch is flipped, I I lack the ability to bring it back down a lot of times. But I have done enough work that it isn't manifesting itself in 
every part of my life. Like Kanye, it don't sound like he's doing nothing. Yeah, that's the problem. That's the problem I have with this. I mean, we've been talking about this whole bipolar thing for years now. Um, I, kickbackers, let's keep it a buck. Kanye ain't the first person we ever heard of in our lives who was bipolar, and he's way right. over there. Right. And you got to ask yourself, is every motherfucker that you know who is bipolar wilding out like Kanye is? Now, if the answer to that question is yes, then that means that more people need a hell of a lot more help. But I can tell you personally, from my own personal experience, there are people who are bipolar who can function normally. It takes vigilance and, and diligence. You know, I'm an insulin-dependent diabetic. If I don't maintain my medication, then fucked up things happen to me. Really, 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 really fucked up. So guess what I have to do to be a grown-ass adult, kickbackers? I have to take care of myself. Kanye's not taking care of himself. Let's just keep it a buck, y'all. Like, we can't, we can't excuse that away because it's a mental health issue. If you have a mental health issue and you have not received a diagnosis and treatment options, then we know where we need to go next. If you have been given all of those things and you are still choosing not to do what you need to do to stay healthy, then what are we talking about right now, New? Yeah, what can we do? We, oh, he needs his help. Oh, oh, no. I got... I, I'm not that kind of person. Y'all know me. I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not rocking with that. Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, a pod named Kickback is not that kind of show. We Boom. hold men Boom. accountable for protecting our women, and we hold women accountable for uh, protecting and supporting our men. Yep. We hold our people accountable for voting and making critically thought out decisions. Yep. This is this man's life. Why are we giving him a pass for ruining his own life and potentially ruining an, ele ele an election yeah. with this bullshit. Yeah. Like, it's not okay. It's just not. Fuck that nigga, young. He, he got our first, I don't, uh set up Stupid Wolf, I think it was named after him first, then it was Donald Trump, then it was back to him, then it was back to Donald Trump, and now it was just set up Stupid Wolf because we don't want to say either one of those idiots' names, but we had to cover this story because it was viral. Um, our what the fuck story of the week, JB, is your team who will now be known, well, temporarily as the Washington football team. Goddamn right. And I actually didn't have a problem with that. Niggas were like, oh my God, they, that's the weakest name ever. They're picking it until they get a good name. But they are, at least for financial reasons, committed to stop using Redskin. So they're saying, we don't know what our new name will be. But we're going with this shit because we're going to stop using Redskin. I actually applaud them for that. Everybody that was offended and clowning them, I'm like, they just move swifter than, like, what the, why the fuck do you clown it? Like, what's your, what's your deal, dude? Yeah, like, they why move you, swifter yeah. than actually was really, truly They were feasible. ready for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Feasible for number one. And number two, I think there's a lesson to be learned in this that, you know, this is this is this is the political and the social power that this movement potentially can bring, because now that we have corporate um, awareness and corporate optics, we can start to create a more financial impact on some of these decision-making processes. And that's why this happened. And yeah. that's why yeah. things are going to continue to happen positively for black people based on this movement. This is a critical part of that. And this is a perfect blueprint, a perfect way to show how you can make that manifest to uh, achieve positive change. So I applaud the, I applaud the Washington football team. I applaud the Native American community for uh, stepping forward. I applaud the, pre the players who supported it. Yeah. And I applaud FedEx for supporting the Native American community, you know? Absolutely, man. So uh, Washington football team, I'm more than happy to call you that. You're still going to be sorry and trash no matter what. Fuck you, nigga. They, they, they're going to be some trash, JB. Like, it is what it is. They, Fuck they, they, you, nigga. Shit. Like let your, us your, let us turn our sucks. shit around. No, let no, us turn no, our shit around. You, you've had you've had decades. You haven't done it. Uh, this like, guy. You, you, this you guy. Know, I'm just saying, JB. 
Team this sucks. guy. I'm just Next sucks. topic. We got Next another, topic. another versus JB. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. And this is yeah, we're gonna change the tone on this one. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, this isn't a good versus. No, um, this is a this is a story that we touched on last week. Um, we told you that we would come back to you with more details once they were forthcoming. We do have some more. Shall I? How shall I say? Hearsay or anecdotal yeah. information? Yeah. So. Go ahead, man. And we're talking about uh, the Megan the Stallion shooting um, and the alleged uh, in- incident where Tory Lane shot her. Now, it was very perplexing to think, well, Tory Lane just shot Megan the Stallion? At first, we thought, she, we thought she stepped on glass. That's what they said. And then it was that she got shot. And then she said she was a victim. Somebody was trying to hurt her. And then we found out that it was more than likely Tory Lane who did the shooting. So we're like, why the fuck this bitch ass nigga shooting her? Like, what the fuck just happened? Like, who, like, what kind of lame ass nigga? And then so an uh, interesting take on it was, was presented, and I'll give my thoughts on it at the end. I just want to give you the information. Um, that Megan Thee Stallion was upset. This is all subjective. This is all conjecture. Megan Thee Stallion was upset that Tory Lanez was flirting with Kylie Jenner, and she began to beat his ass. And then they left the party. She continued to beat his ass. And at some point, he shot her in the foot to keep her away from him. Or well, he sat down at the ground and it hit her foot. And I was presented with, what are your thoughts on that? Now, I don't know if that's what happened. Tory could be a bitch-ass nigga with a Napoleon complex who beats women and shoots them. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I was asked if she was beating the shit out of him, like, and I know a woman, well, I, I knew a woman who beat the shit out of her boyfriend. She was about two, almost three times his size and beat the shit out of him and he would never fight back. Now, I do think that if he would have fought back, he would have stood a chance um, just because I think he probably could, maybe well, hopefully could fight better. I don't fucking know. He's a man, but we don't know if he could stand a chance or not. What we know is he got his ass whooped often. And I remember the one time he finally fought back, she called the police and got him locked up. And I was fucked up. And so that scenario where a woman beats on a man, it is just as deplorable as when a man beats on a woman, especially when there's a size discrepancy in the favor of one gender. And in this case, in the favor of a woman. So I don't like that. I ain't feeling that. I'm not for that. I'm not rocking. But I just don't know if that's the truth. So if you ask me that question, my answer is that. Yeah, that's a that's a perfectly reasonable way of putting it. I felt the same way when I read the article. Like, if she's beating his ass and she's literally like damn near twice his size in terms of sheer mass. I mean, she's damn near two hundred pounds and he's what, a buck twenty or something? Yeah, yeah. That's a hell of a weight difference, you know. And we're not gonna sit here and say that women can't fight because women be out here in these streets boxing the same way niggas do and women can learn women can learn martial arts or fighting skills the same way men can they line well, well, up Eddie say women are doing time body they will fuck you up <laughs> yeah like yeah like if i if i if i see her if i see a woman with her chin down and knuckled up you know i uh, that's 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 a little that's a little different than, than yeah. somebody doing this shit. Yeah. She, you know, she mm-hmm. it's like okay. The, the, the sisters be like this. Yeah. You know, oh, oh shit! Uh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> you know, you're not a bitch. <laughs> that yeah. Um, that's that 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 could that could pose a different situation, and you know that that whole male female side of the domestic abuse thing is something that, as you just mentioned, is overlooked. That's something that we're not going to overlook on this show, you know, yeah. uh, and I think that's the importance of bringing up these points because it smelled funny to me off the off break. You know what I'm saying? Dude? Yeah. It smelled funny. I don't like thinking that Tory Lanez shot a female even in a situation where he was in an altercation. But if right. that happened, you know, you got to You got to take a closer look at that, too, and be like, OK, what really happened? You know what I'm saying? Right, and um, I want to leave it there, JB, because I'm, I'm. 
it is hard for me to justify a man shooting a woman. I can't exactly. do it. Exactly. But I have seen niggas get their ass beat, and sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get a motherfucker off you. And again, this is bigger than Meg and Tori because we don't know what happened with Meg and Tori. Tori could have been a raving lunatic drunk and just acted an ass. He could, he could have just accidentally shot it when he grabbed the gun. Or, you know, we don't know. But when the scenario was presented to us, we, we felt like it was a, it was a good fodder. Let, yeah. let's, let's discuss this angle. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, uh, really something you know, to consider. positive energy goes out to Meg and Tori. I hope that works out, whatever that means. I hope you both find peace in that situation. Absolutely. Um, our shut up stupid award goes to this is tricky but it goes to the state of Georgia man yeah what y'all doing man why why y'all be all together and shit why y'all be having on masks and shit why 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 y'all be acting like it ain't no corona uh, why why y'all be doing that why y'all be doing that like for real for real I want to know. Y'all tell me. Why y'all be doing that, young? We had our largest day of cases reported um, a few days ago. And it's only, it's number one to the number two, which was a few weeks ago. So this, these both, both of these occurrences have happened in July. And I understand we're testing more. So we're going to get more positive results. I get that part. But I've talked to nurses, and it's not like it's not proportionate. It is greater volume uh, uh, outside of the amount of testing we're doing. So let's say we tested a little bit and we got three percent results. We're testing a whole lot, but we're getting like ninety percent results. Like it, it is, and those numbers aren't correct. So don't hold me to that. But my point is. It's not just that we're testing more, that we're getting more results. We're getting them at a higher percentage clip. Yeah. JB, say your Harvard shit and make them understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah, statistically, we're getting more uh, positive results per thousand than we were before. So Boom. even if we are taking 10,000 more tests, we're getting thousands more results per thousand, which means that while the number ostensibly is high, um, statistically and per capita, it is also high, meaning that more people are infected now per person in this state than were before. Especially because it's ostensibly, because they ostensibly higher, motherfucker. Per capita, not to be confused with capital. This guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I ostensibly agree with JB, per capita. This motherfucker. Anyway, um, th- <laughs> this is this is a problem, and it harkens back to my. It harkens life. back. This nigga, hold up, a pun ain't kicked back first. This nigga harkened back to some shit, nigga. We have never harkened back to anything before. <laughs> this nigga harkening back. I'm, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm gonna harken back to shorty because I'm, I'm gonna harken back. In my mind, you sitting right here. I'm 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 harking back to you. Oh my God! Well, while he harkens back to Shorty, I'm harking back to what I said was my low point of this week because I gotta go to work every day. I see these motherfuckers out on the street. Um, I see people in stores. I see people um, sitting in restaurants and just kind of doing what the fuck ever, as if COVID wasn't like absolutely everywhere like it's it's right. it's ridiculous it's like it's worse it's because people are just exploding out of their houses now it's worse than what it was when COVID first started like a lot worse and um i mean it's gotten to the point where like traffic has gotten bad on the roads new we got mask get uh, what you using for now one uh randy what you said you're using I don't know what uh, what that what exact the, phrase yeah. was. Or where y'all mask at? Is that what she's saying? Let us know exactly what you're going to use from that one. Um, I hope it ain't none of my stand-up material because it, it, it's it's for the stage, not for you to just do all in your house, all willy-nilly. Um, we'll move on from that, but uh, shout out to Mama Mayor and fuck Governor Kemp, and we'll move on. Everybody stay safe. 
you know what? Time out. Build your immune system. Let's not live in a, uh, a culture of fear where we just terrified. Oh, no, no, no. fuck that. Take your multivitamin, vitamin, whatever that is. All in addition to vitamin D3 boosts your immune system. Vitamin C, specifically 1,000 milligrams, boosts your immune system. I am taking sea moss with bladder rack and black seed oil because that eliminates mucus from your body, gives you better energy. Um, it has dozens of health, uh, health benefits. Sea moss gives you 92 of the 102 minerals your body needs to function at its highest level. That is what I'm doing. I'm taking all of that and a multivitamin, super strong in iron because I'm anemic. What are you doing? And if you're not doing anything, this ain't a beat-up session. I don't have nothing smart to say to you. All I have to say is I love you. Do something. Yeah. Vitamin D3, vitamin C, a multivitamin, sea moss, bladder rack, sour salt leaf, uh, black seed oil. If you don't know where to go, I'll put it in the description. Pharmacy for Life. Pharmacy with the F, the number four, Life. Dot com. That is Styles P, Styles P from the Locks Bad Boy. From that's his company, and it gives you sea moss, black seed oil, sour sap leaf, oregano oil, things that help rebuild your body. Um, I want to make sure I say that I'm doing it, and I don't want to do it and live forever. Maybe you know, and then I don't tell y'all y'all die, or I might die anyway. But that is not the point. The point is, I want to give you the information, JB. What do you have to add? Well, um, I was just going to ask, she was saying that she was going to use the word that I used from now on. Grim was some autocorrect bullshit that happened, basically. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She, she, she used, uh, what, what was the word? It wasn't, um, it wasn't per capita. It was, um. Harkin. Harkin. Yeah, we got to harken back. No, you said something else before harken too. You had like seven words today, JB. I was watching you. You extra gangster geeky. It's because we got the NWA t-shirt out, and that's why you're acting like that, JB. I know what's going on. You're really being a nerd attitude. He said harken back and, and, and per capita and another word. I can't remember what the fuck the word was, but it was before harken back. Ostensibly. Ostensibly. See, you ostensibly reminded me of the word. What, what ostensibly mean? Is Osten- obvious? No, uh, yeah, ostensibly is is a is an overly obvious fact. It- See, I was right, mother kickbackers, motherfuckers. Y'all think he the, the nervous attitude, and I'm the, the dummy on the sofa. No, bitches, no. I'm the righteous ratchet. I know these words too. I just don't use them because <laughs> I know y'all wouldn't get it. <laughs> I use women for uh, them. Call me a sexist. Let me, let's move on, JB. Get me out of trouble. Um, uh, a woman. Yeah, yeah. Get you out of trouble. Get you out of trouble with women. A woman. Right, right. Set a man's car on fire. That's why you need to shut the fuck up. JB said, it. "I ain't see it." As far as we know, she was just trying to wash it. Uh, nah, so she no. she ran up on his car with a baseball bat, knocked out his lights, yep. went crazy, then doused the car with gasoline. That's some Randy shit. <laughs> RJ Randy, I think you would do that. Uh, you, you look like the type. <laughs> doused the car with gasoline and then set the car and damn near herself on fire. <laughs> Slim, she dropped that mask. That fire came out and knocked her to the ground. She was like, oh! She looked like Mike Tyson when he hit Roy Jones Jr. on September 12th. Blue up. When the blue up, blue up. Um, the fire knocked her to the fucking ground. Um, that isn't funny, of course. Uh, okay, it was funny. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we're not, we're not mature. <laughs> that shit was funny. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's how to somebody you know? Damn. Damn. Hey, y'all, y'all gotta relax out there. Yeah, that. Yeah, y'all gotta relax. Stop setting cars on fire and knocking yourself down. Yeah. So the long and short of it, the reason why this is so hilarious is because she almost burned herself up. Number one. Number two. She was arrested on um, felony property damage uh, charges. Um, number three. 
the car was totaled by the insurance company, so the guy's going to get a brand new car out of the whole deal. Oh, no. Um, yeah, this is. Yeah, if you can get a new car, she's in jail. And her, her little mug said she was smiling and shit. I was like, yeah, you, you meant that shit. Um, yeah, just absolutely, absolutely stupid. Come on, y'all. Like, let, let, let's, let's, let's relax. Yeah, let's, you let's not, relax. Let, let's not, let's not be setting folks' cars on fire. Yeah, man. Especially don't don't set my car on fire because I'm partying and you don't you, you mad. I need my I need killer. Relax. Um, our Nipsey Hustle Award. And JB, this has been a theme, the, the versus thing. But I'm gonna say this right now. This is black men versus was it congressman or senator? Yo ho. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, we against you, nigga. You, you're not gonna be coming at women of color. And I know that the saying is protect black women, but I, it's protect black women and any woman of color, or really any woman that's in danger of being accosted or attacked. That's where I'm at with it. That's right. And um uh AOC. Alexandria uh, Ocasio uh, Cortez. Cortez. Yeah, I, I call it AOC because I can't remember all that shit. Sorry, no, no disrespect to my Latina community, but uh, I, I be high. Um, but a congressman Yoho um, accosted her, her own words, um, outside of uh, one of the congressional meetings, and you know put his finger in her face. You know, said you know called her all kinds of names, called her why, you know, called her a bitch in front of the media. And try to come back and justify it because I have daughters. So you think I would be that mean? I, I would do, and I have. I do love women. Uh, uh, uh. And he just so mad at her. Nah, nigga, that excuse don't work no more. And I'm repeating her words because I want to get her words across. Don't attack my women of color because you don't agree with their politics. Uh, white Republicans, we will fuck you up. Don't attack our women of color. And I'm saying I don't like the same women of color, but I want to meet. It, I want it to meet more than just black women. Mm-hmm. I want it to meet Latina women, Asian women, Asian mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. Um, don't attack our sisters out there or, or white women who are on the right side of history. Don't attack them neither. Like like fuck that shit. And she handled it with grace and style. And don't flair. attack our women. Period. 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 Like the little kids say, that's on period. I ain't never said that before. I bet Ari be saying that shit. That's on period. Not to me, she don't. But uh, even not to you. <laughs> I'm gonna ask. I'm like, have you have you heard this phrase? <laughs> but that's on period. Leave fucking women alone, motherfucker. Like, why are you jumping at women and accosting them in Congress? Like, calm the fuck down, yo ho. We should. I don't know if we can. We can't disbar him, but I want to know who's running against him next term. And I'm gonna put a lot of support behind that person, because don't come for AOC. Like she damn near up there with Ashanti to me. The only reason she ain't all the way up there because I don't want to disrespect her mind by making her an object of a crush, because that might uh, lessen her position or something. Niggas be like, oh, new got a crush on her. I don't want to diminish her in no way. But leave AOC the fuck alone, yo ho. I'll fuck you up, unless that's a crime. And then I, I don't mean that. It is a joke. I'll fuck you up. It's a joke. I'll fuck you up. It's a joke. This is JB wrote my lines. Get on him. No, I did not. I did not write his lines, but um, this is not a joke. And, you know, if you out there fucking with our women, I will fuck you up. And that is not a joke. Now, I did not say that to a specific individual, but I am right. saying it to all men who choose to conduct themselves in this way around our women. That will not be tolerated under any circumstances. And I want to make that abundantly Factory. clear. Factory. You, uh, you accost our women. You, you disrespect our women in public. You just lost your fucking job. We're going to do everything that we can to make sure that you are no longer in office come around the next election. Boom. This will not be forgotten. Boom. Just that simple. Boom. It won't be a happy ending for you, but it'd be a happy ending for us. Um, and that's the segue. 
Speaking of happy endings, <laughs> and this is not porn, you guys. I know y'all nasty. Uh, but there is a TV show that apparently I've been missing because it's not even on the end no more. But it was a hot program called Happy Endings, and it's on Hulu now. And Damon Wayne's son is one of the stars of the show. Okay. And it's about three couples. One couple got uh, the wife left him at the altar. They were all at the wedding. The second couple is her sister and her black – they're all white. Her sister and her black husband who's Damon Wayne's. And then there's another homegirl and then a gay white male friend. And those six are the crew. That's an and, um, ensemble cast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it the show starts with the day the wife uh leaves the, at the wedding. When okay. she runs off at the wedding. And the show is the entire aftermath of that. Because they're still crew. So they're still hanging together and dude gotta see the wife. And you know, wife gotta see the dude. And it, it's like it reminds me of an episode of the uh Fine Ain't Keep Back. But well, we'll, 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 we'll We'll leave that for another day. For those that don't know the real story, that's so why the girls aren't on the show anymore. But that's neither here nor there. Um, so the show JB is a sitcom and it's funny. Um, I like it. Um, I, I'm like at two, three episodes. It's cool to me. So I'm watching it. Um, what else we got? Uh, the 100. Um, that's a sci-fi thriller on US on CW. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, still watching that. It's currently going on. Um, the Earth got fucked up. We went into space and lived on space stations. We started realizing that our, you know, 80 years later, whatever the fuck, 20 years later, excuse me, um, our rations and everything was running out, and we needed to make a move and land on a planet instead of just being in space with thousands of people. So we sent 100 delinquents, kind of like what happened when Christopher Columbus and his delinquents came to, came to America. Um, we won't get into that right now, but it sent a bunch of delinquents to Earth to figure shit out, and that's what the show is. It is several years of figuring it out, going to different planets, uh, uh, contact with the space station, the space, you know, you know, all of those things. It is a really, really good show. I highly recommend it. I'm watching it now, and um, it's on CW. Yeah, JB, what you watching? I'm watching this show called uh, Cursed on uh, Netflix right now. It's What's the difference between Cursed and Cursed? Is there a difference in the spelling? No, not really. Just okay. depending, depending okay. on what you're talking about. Um, um, so at any rate, um, the show is actually just about uh, a young uh, a young woman who um, is uh, a witch, and she actually is given um excalibur before arthur does Ooh. Um, so the show is um the story of her life and what she's going through i'm i'm on like episode three now um okay. it's pretty good though and my daughter and i are watching it together so it's nice i want to um i i've been tempted by that show i haven't started it yet but i will start it i will start it. i think that's a good one jb um anything y'all watching you want us to add Kickbackers that, that are watching live on Facebook, what are you watching? I'm going to go into music, but if you give me a good suggestion, I'll come back and read it. So, yeah. Um, our Eargasm segment, which is our podcast playlist, as most of you know, we have a pod name kickback playlist on Apple, Tidal, and Spotify. We update it every single Friday. It is about a two and a half hour playlist of music that gets updated and tweaked every Friday. Um, so this Friday we've added J. Cole put out a two piece JB, three different tracks. Um, The Lion King on Ice and The Climb Back. And then and J. Cole is spitting. He on his lyrical miracle, like nigga, like I'm the best rapper. And it's ironic that Drake just put out a two piece that we thought was cool, but what blown away with. Mm -hmm. And then J. Cole says, Here's my two piece. I'm like, J. Cole ain't playing. He going at Drake and Kendrick. I'm going to make this prediction. Anytime Drake or Kendrick drops anything, J. Cole is going to drop something too. I promise you that. I see it. J. Cole has been saying for two years, I'm the greatest of all time. I want that title. And I'm going to earn it. And I think he's doing that. Drake dropped a two-piece that we thought was cool. Here comes J. Cole with a two-piece that's fire. Wait till Kendrick drops. I promise you this. Uh, J. Cole's full-length album 
won't come out until Kendrick and Drake quote unquote respond to what he's just done. Mm. Mm. So we don't get a new shit from Kendrick or, or Kendrick and uh, Drake. We will wait on Ke on J. Cole's album that's rumored to drop any minute now. It won't drop. He's waiting. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. So there's a little beef out there to... to yeah, yeah, J. Cole wants the title. He, he tired of that. playing with him. I ain't mad at Like that. us. We ain't playing with Joe Button Podcast. We ain't playing with million dollars worth of game, and we ain't playing with horrible decisions. We the best motherfucking podcast. We give you pop culture, politics, music, sex, and sports. Don't nobody else give you that from an informed opinion. It's a pod name kickback, y'all. I was literally a rapper. JB was literally a singer and producer. He literally graduated from Harvard. I literally fucked your girlfriend. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> this guy. This guy. Oh, my God. Anyway. Oh, okay. So, all right. Uh, uh, the Let's get back. <laughs> on, on that list is that, uh, that Ralph Tresvant, Johnny Gill, hey! played earlier. That joke. That joint, um, it it cranks it cranks a little bit. It's a nice little R and B joint. It it takes me back to, you know, the days when they used it. to do it. But they'll sue us, right? Yeah, they will. Damn. All right. Well, it's called All Mine. It's Rob Tresvant featuring Johnny Gill. As y'all know, they did a song together last year. Johnny Gill featuring Rob Tresvant, and then the year before that, Johnny Gill put out a song that featured everybody on New Edition. Um, the song, I like it. Um, we had a couple writer notes, but we're not going to, you know, shit on the Ralph T and Johnny G. We're just going to say, listen to it. It's a whole video out. You can watch it on YouTube. Yeah. They doing it. The Salt and Pepper Biz and shit. Uh, they're a little bit older than me and JB. You know, me and JB ain't really got a Salt and Pepper Biz. I got like two strings of salt in my beard, but it's, it's not Salt and Pepper. I, I, I'm actually waiting for it, JB. I, got like I want three, this on the pepper. I got three white jumps that'll grow long as fuck and stick out like that when I don't try. I got pubic hair like that. Yeah. <laughs> didn't need to know that. But <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> didn't need but to know beard, that. But my beard, I don't even think y'all can see any of the gray. I don't think y'all can see it. But um, it's there. I, I'm not wishing for more gray hair. I am just saying I'll be cool when it comes. I'm not going to be upset. Like, I wasn't wishing to be bald, but Billions, happy birthday, Billions. Happy motherfucking birthday, my nigga. Ah, nigga. Um, but, yeah, we don't I, we don't get hiccups with you because you be outside too much. And so I had to start saving my shit bald. And I don't mind being bald, and I wouldn't mind a little gray. I, I'll be bald and gray and get your aunt. I will fuck your aunt. This guy. Yeah, yeah, nigga, nigga don't, don't be dumb. I'll fuck, I'll fuck you and your aunt. <laughs> I'm at that age, JB. You know how women be like, read the age, we get the father or the son? I'm at the age, I could fuck you or, or your aunt. Uh, so, <laughs> let's get on to that book club <laughs> discussion. JB, like, I'm tired of this shit, new. We, we, got, we got shit to handle. <laughs> All right. Um, so, well, it's contagious. We've been reading Contagious. For the last month mm -hmm. by Jonah Berger. Yep. It's a book that was recommended to us by Nipsey Hussle. And it's about marketing and branding. And we did, if you can only imagine the gangster geek, the nerd attitude, and the righteous ratchet getting their signals crossed and reading two different chapters. Seems seems reasonable, right? Seems reasonable. Yeah, that's what we did. So <laughs> Um, I think JB, well, we don't know the exact numbers because the chapters are different on Audible and Apple. Mm -hmm. So JB, I want you to go with what you read and then I'll go with what I read. Is that cool? <clears throat> yeah, that, that works for me. Um, Boom. the one, the one I read talked about, um, talked about positive, positive associations as it relates to word of mouth, mm -hmm. um, linking up linking up your brand with something that people can easily latch on to and remember and make a basic part of their life all the time. And the example that they brought up with 
uh, brought up was uh, Cheerios and the fact that Cheerios is more popular than Disney World. Cheerios makes more money a year than Disney World does. The numbers aren't even close. Here's why. Because every goddamn day, you can't be thinking about you know Disney World. But every goddamn yeah. day when you get up and think about breakfast, Cheerios might pop into your head whether you eat them or not. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's kind of like when people say, "Oh, you had your Wheaties this morning." That type of association, that type of that type of normalcy association is really, really good for branding. Branding, for example, that's why we release our show on Monday. Monday, Monday morning, so that it is your drive time news. Tell them why we call it Monday. We call it Monday because we record the show live on Facebook on Sunday. Then we mix down, produce, and release the show on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, and our other media outlets. Outlets <laughs> <laughs> on Monday, hence Sh Monday. Um, drive time, tune in, listening, news, sports, entertainment, pop culture, sex. A pod named Kickback comes at you. You can think about it like you think about Cheerios. <laughs> think about it like you think about breakfast. Will help you have. Will be the best part of waking up. You know what I'm saying. The best part of waking up is a pod named Kickback Cup. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, that's the chapter I read. <laughs> yeah, so the, the chapter I read was on stories, and it was about association. So it was about associating stories with memories. That how some companies, you know, go above and beyond. Um, like Golden, well, fuck, Golden Lodge, Golden Casinos, um, did a lot of crazy things. They would give away twenty thousand dollars for no reason. And one year in the Olympics, they paid allegedly, because they don't admit it, paid a guy to do golden casinos on his chest, and he, he's a world-famous streaker. So he's known for just running in places naked. Now, he didn't run into the Olympics in the swimming competition, the diving competition, naked. He had on a swimsuit. But when he got out, he had on his tattoo, and the police was waiting for him because he wasn't supposed to be there. So it talked about, you know, that story. And how that story is about going to casino. But sometimes that, you know, they get associated together and it's a benefit. And then sometimes they don't get associated together and it's not a benefit. But it's really about the story. Like when women say, New eats pussy better than everybody on earth, and then they tell that story, it makes women, other women look at me in a different way. Now, it's a story about eating pussy, but it benefits me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just trying yeah, to give examples. I'm, I'm going to, I'm the to give examples. You could go right ahead. I'm just, I'm just, no, I'm just giving. I'm just giving ahead. examples, JB. No, I'm ahead, trying to take the picture ahead. for the kickbackers. I'm trying to give them the story. Um, <laughs> so uh basically how I would how would the the delivery works I guess is you would tell a story about something um that you're trying to promote. So if your business is t-shirts, your business is taxes, doing taxes, your business is car repair, car wash, uh insurance that that the stories you give people or that people learn will help push your business without ha them having to push the actual business. They can just tell the story. If the story is, man, you know my girlfriend's house burned down and three people died? That's crazy. But the story is, it's crazy. But the, thank God they had Allstate Insurance because it paid for the new home. Everybody got a million dollar check and at least they're in a better position. That's the story. You know, the, the crux of it is the fire and who passed and what happened. But um, you still get that. It was blank, blank insurance company. Um, and I, that's, that's like, well, you know, the, the premise of that chapter. So, the, again, the book is called Contagious. It's written by Jonah Berger. Yep. I'm li we're listening to it on, on Audible and Apple mm. Books. And you can get it. And... We're at the end. I mean, there is uh, chapter six. Uh, the uh, 
story chapter was the final chapter. So I want to come back next week and do a recap of the entire book. But that's over. And now, JB, I want you to tell them what our fantasy book is and why you chose this for a fantasy book. We're doing self-help books one month, fantasy books another month. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I know. I don't know that you would necessarily call this one fantasy, but this one blends two of my favorite sort of genres. Um, uh, what I would call like epic fiction, like big long fiction, um, fantastic fiction, if you will, and history. Um, this book is The Three Musketeers by Alexander Dumas. Um, oh, you, you, you switched it. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. um, because um, this is a book that I haven't read in a very long time, but it is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, written by one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest writers of all time. Um, so we're going to delve into uh, the Three Musketeers. It, it is it is okay. a bit of a long. It, well, it's not a bit. It's no question about it. It's a much longer read. These fantasy books will be longer reads, but in my opinion, it's a story that engages you throughout it's a story that you can listen to while you're cleaning up while you're getting dressed in the morning while you're driving to work while you're whatever you know? okay okay <clears throat> so i think that once you get into it you'll be able to pick it up at a pace i know that it is available for 99 cents on um what? on apple ebooks right now oh because it's a classic so, oh, yeah. oh well yeah i'm getting that tonight mm -hmm. 99 um, cent nah, i got a dollar nigga yeah, and it is uh, it is an awesome read, so I encourage y'all to join us. You'll learn some more about French history, but more importantly, um, you'll also learn a bit about one of the one of our black heroes, Alexander Dumas, um, the son of a mulatto general during um, the uh, uh, the uh, I believe it was Louis the Eighteenth um, mm -hmm. Empire in France. Okay. Um, so just okay. a great, great book, great historical study. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm looking forward to it, too. I'm going to download it tonight, and we'll start it week after next. But mm -hmm. you guys should start with us. Um, uh, Randy said In the Dark on Netflix is pretty good. Jeremy said he started Curse Today or Curse It Today. Uh, Remix on Netflix is good. Uh, finally watched Uncut, Gem Uncut Gems is good. Dark Desire, if you don't mind reading subtitles, is apparently good. Uh, Ron said, N-O, season four, uh, well, I don't know what this is. N-O-S-A-4-2. Four four uh, um, I don't know what that is. Ron, you, you got to give us all the words. This abbreviation is killing us. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what um, that is. Uh, Jeremy said, he always sends Kendrick right there before Cole. I, I ain't mad at that. But I've been saying what Cole is saying. Cole is like, nigga, I'm coming. Um, you've been waiting for it. Um, he wants to be the ball sensei. Who me? The ball sensei? Or is that JB? He talked about you and not want, not minding having the the gray beard. Oh yeah, the ball sensei. That's right. That yeah. Uh yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> so those are some of the shows that we're watching and, and books that we're reading I want you guys to really get into the book club go and download uh, Jonah Burger's Contagious it's six hours you could do one hour every day next week and be done with the book by our Sunday live show right? yeah, yeah. oh yeah right? like come on we're, we're, we're not stressing you guys out nope. we're giving you what you need we're giving you soul food this is soul food. Absolutely. Um, speaking of soul food, that always you know brings me to music. Um, but we already did it, so I'm going to skip that. <laughs> yeah. He been drinking. He been <laughs> drinking. This guy, my God. All right, so we did, uh, and Brandy has new music. We'll, we'll, we'll go with that. And we did the book. And now, JB, uh, the NBA and the MLB are back. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. work across the street from the Brave Stadium, the Battery. Um, when they had their first home game, I will watch it from my office. I'll, I'll be like this. I got free parking. I can go park and stand outside. I can 
the, the things that can happen, JB. We, we can do things. We can we can be there for this game. Yeah, and yeah. socially distance. Yeah, I, I I love the fact that baseball and basketball are back. Um, you know, looking at the footage, um, they have done what they could to limit the seating in the stadium, but also provided some value added features for those working uh, watching remotely. And we saw a little bit of that earlier, new especially with the NBA with their floor side cameras and those yeah, types of things. Yeah. That shit is really really slick. They're taking advantage of you know having that extra space to put cameras yeah. in there. Um, I can't blame them, especially when you got people watching at home. Why not give them a courtside experience, especially if they're going to pay for. It. You know Hell what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I got to put this up because Jeremy's <laughs> he been drinking. he been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I dig it, New. And the, and, the, and the NFL, the players have agreed to their collective bargaining agreement. So camp will be starting soon. Yeah, 50 um, days. Mm hmm. Uh, we about to get back into the swing of things. We'll see what happens. But it's going to be different, and it's just going to be different. Yeah, um, I had tickets uh, for the Ravens-Cowboys game in Baltimore on December 3rd, and they refunded the tickets and was like, nah, Slim. That was thunder. That was real. Did you do that? Or that was real thunder? That was thunder. No oh, shit. It's, it's about the rain and Georgia rain. Have y'all seen Georgia rain's Instagram? She's so fat. Uh, it, it, let me get back on track. God damn it. Um, so, shit, I thought about Georgia Rain as, and I lost all my thought. We were talking about sports, right? Mm -hmm. Some of sports. Oh, yeah, sports. Sports are back. The NBA has started. They're in their scrimmage, which is really their preseason. The season starts on July 30, 30th, and they're doing eight games before they go into the playoffs. LeBron looks good. Kuzma looks good. Manute Bowe's son plays for Denver Nuggets. His name is Bo Bo. He looks good. I wanted the Wizards to draft him, but I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. We picked mm -hmm. Rui Hachimura, who's looked good. So I can't, you know, be like we made a mistake. He looked good. Um, uh, the Wizards look good, uh, of course. You know, we're watching them extra close. But um, the Lakers look good. Milwaukee looks good. Um, a lot of players are looking good. J.R. Smith shot his shot and hit the back of the backboard. And he was like, yeah, that's J.R. Smith. That list looks regular. <laughs> and they got the sound effects for the fans. They got different camera angles. But the WNBA JB started today, their first official game of the season. They have dedicated the season to Breonna Taylor. That's what's up. Every woman's jersey has the name Breonna Taylor on it. That's what's up. And it's dedicated to say her name, an organization that shouts out women being killed unjustly. And they didn't take a knee during the, the national anthem. The WNBA players all left the court. Damn. To show their support for Black Lives Matter and, and say her name. The WNBA is, in my opinion, leading the way. Yeah. They are leading. The NBA is very close to them, and the NFL is starting to catch on. Um, but the WNBA, my sisters, my queens, y'all did that. Y'all yeah. did that. That's I, awesome. Y'all did that. That's awesome. Got to love it. Got to love it. And we got to support. Now we got something to watch. Now we got something to do. Um, so let's support our teams, especially when they're supporting us. And our team, the Washington Mystics, are the defending champions. Now our MVP, Elena Deladon, did not participate in the bubble season for the WNBA because she has Lyme disease. Right. Which she's revealed makes her take 90 pills a day. Yeah. Ladies. Fellas, I take like eight, nine pills a day, and I'll be like, Jesus, this shit is crazy. The sea moss and the bladder rack and the, the sour sop leaf and my high blood pressure, and it'd be a lot. But I take like nine, ten pills a day. That's a whole lot. She's taking over 90, JB. That's crazy. That's crazy. If that's what you have to do to maintain your health, you probably shouldn't be in the bubble. Yeah, yeah. No question. No we still question. love you, though. We still rock with you. No question. No we question. We still Mystics fans. Well, and more importantly, the Mystics are rocking with her too, which yep. is the which is the even better thing. She's not gonna lose her salary behind this yep. health, health first move. Um, so you gotta salute the Mystics for giving her the proper work work life balance that she needs. Absolutely, um, JB. Because yeah. the league wasn't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. The Mystics mm -hmm. said we will do it. Exactly. And exactly. shout out to everybody in DC. Love y'all here. 
Yeah, yeah everybody, but, but the risk, but the Washington football team. Um, but uh, outside of that, because you know DC's football team really is DC, Dallas, Cowboy, right, JB? Good night and God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. We will see y'all first thing Monday morning for drive time. Fuck that nigga. We, we appreciate y'all tuning in. This has been a fun, fun show. We had to address some serious things, but at the end of the day. Um, when we look at, I know I talked to JB, we talked about our online store that's coming on August 1st. We talked about the podcast. We talked about interviews. We talked about very important topics on the show. And we even laughed and joked about our personal lives. But the one thing we wanted to make sure we mentioned is arrest the cops that killed Breonna Taylor. Yeah. We ain't letting that go. No. We not letting that go. No. Uno. We out.